When viola players are thinking about getting a new instrument, one of the most important considerations is what size to get. There are two reasons for this. One is it affects how comfortable the instrument is to play, and the other is the effect it has on the sound. When I was starting to make instruments about 30 years ago, generally speaking, the balance of opinion was that the bigger the better in terms of viola size. But shortly after that, I remember reading an article in the Strad about viola players and what size violas they played. And what came out of that was most of them were playing a viola of this size, which is about 16 and a quarter inches long, which is generally known as a as sort of in the middle of the range of violas. The way that we differentiate between different sizes of violas is by the back length. This is measured over the arching from one side of the button along to the centre line at the bottom down here near the end pin. Um, if an instrument is 16 inches to perhaps 16 and a half, so that's about 40.8 to 42 centimetres, then that's a middle sized viola with large ones being up to about 18 inches and the small ones down to about 15. When we talk about viola size, the length of the back is only one consideration we need to take into account. Because when you're playing, when you've got the viola underneath your chin, it's not this length here that it makes the difference. It is how far away your hand is away from your body, which is a combination of the body length and the neck length of a viola. Perhaps the most important effect that the viola size has upon the player is how far this left arm is extended. If uh, without a viola you were to put your hand on your left shoulder and gradually move your arm away from your body, once your arm gets past the vertical position you can feel the increase in tension in your biceps muscle. And that is it increases, and it's particularly noticeable once you get to the position where you would hold a viola. If you do the same thing again, but this time concentrating on the shoulder and not on your back, you also notice an increase in tension there. And the other thing is, once you twist your arm into the position to play on the fingerboard, it, when you're playing a violin at that position, the fingers move relatively easily. But with every little increase in distance away from your body, the harder it is to move your fingers. On a violin, the ratio between the length of the body between the bridge and the top of the belly here and the neck is always in a proportion of three to two. But on a viola, this can vary from that ratio uh, and up to 3.2 to two. To see why this is the case, um, I can show you these two violas. The one on the right, um, which has, has not been varnished, is modelled on an Andrea Guarneri. And if you look at the position of the C bags and the F holes, and the nicks on the F holes where the, in between which the bridge will stand, you can see that they're further down the instrument than they are on this other instrument. Uh, on your left. The instrument on the left is um, a Magini model and the peculiarities of that are that the C bouts are very high up and so that means the length of string that is overlying the body is also um, short in comparison with this other one here. When I make this model I could choose to have the same ratio of neck length to the length of uh, between the bridge and the end, edge of the belly, which is known as the body stop, as a constant. I could do it at the same constant of, of two to three as on a violin. But the trouble with that is, is that neck is rather long and it, it means it's further away from your body. So I, instead I choose to make it a, a bit smaller to bring your hand uh, nearer. On this model of viola, on the Magini, the bridge is very high up and so the string length above the belly is quite short. 
So instead of making the neck of the same proportions as on the Andrea Guarneri model, I actually make the neck longer. The reason for this is that viola strings are made to work at a, at a range of length but they do work a little bit better if they're somewhat about the same length as on the Andrea Guarneri instrument. So having this neck a bit longer does mean that the strings works better. Works better. But when you hold it under your chin, because the neck is longer, your left hand is obviously further away. Although these two instruments have the same length of back, when you play the Magini model, your left hand is further away from your body than you when playing the Andrea Granelli model. The other difference is that the string length on the Magini model is significantly shorter than on the Andrea Granelli model, so that makes a difference to how far your fingers are apart. And the third difference is that because the bridge is further away from your body on the Magini model, your right hand also has to be further forward and that puts a bit of extra strain on, on your arm. Having made a number of instruments of this size early in my career, people started to ask me whether I would make a smaller viola. This instrument here is a Pietro Guarneri model which is 15 and a half inches in the body. So this is a full three quarters of an inch shorter than the Andrea Granari. It still has a good quality of sound, largely because it is quite wide and because the archings are a very good shape to develop a good viola sound. The tendency is to think that with a smaller viola that everything would be smaller on this instrument than on an instrument of 16 and a quarter inches. However, if I compare the Magine model here, which I already said has got a short string length, and hold it up against the Peter Guarneri model, you can probably see that the string length on the larger instrument is in fact smaller than on the smaller instruments. What that means is that the, your fingers are slightly farther apart on the small instrument, but as far as the extent, left hand extension from your body, it is not nearly as great as on this model, as on the Magini model. So when choosing an instrument, there are a few things to bear in mind. If you play an instrument already and want to compare another, it is worth not only knowing the length of back, that your instrument has, but also how long the neck is. Another important measurement which will help you to understand the spread of your fingers is to know the open string length. So if you were to talk to somebody and they said they had an instrument that was perhaps a quarter of an inch shorter than yours, it's useful to know the other measurements so you get an idea of how it feels. In the end, what you're going to have to do is to try the different instruments to find out what they feel like and how comfortable they are to play, as well, of course, as to find out what sound they make and whether that sound is the sort of sound that you like, the sound that you want to produce. In the end, the decision is a balance between the sound you want to achieve and the size of instrument that you find comfortable. But having an idea of the neck length, the string length, as well as the back length is going to make a great difference in how easy it is for you to make that choice.